this, this was an important debate. I had planned another closing message, but I feel compelled to say what I'm about to say. Now, I risk sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but it's no longer a theory. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one world communist government. The combining of national governments started with the European Union. That union started with trade agreements, then a common currency, the euro, and now a European parliament that is feverishly passing laws that uh, override the laws of, new, of the member nations. A constitution was drafted but rejected by a few uh, of those nations, but never mind. They implemented it anyway. Now it's North America's turn. Building on the North American Free Trade Agreement, the NAFTA section of the Commerce Department is busy drafting laws and regulations for a North American Union, a union of Canada, America, and Mexico. The President has attended secret meetings and signed at least two agreements under the Security and Prosperity Partnership Program. Information leaked out about the meetings and now it is all in the open. No treaty has been signed, so Congress has not become involved. However, money from our Treasury is now being spent for this effort. with the United States military to operate on our soil. A military that condones and openly practices torture such as waterboarding and even taking pliers to children's genitals. Some have called this an act of treason. Number two, why does he continue to hide from Canadians the fact that the North American Union is real and being done undemocratically? Some have called this treason. Where's the parliamentary debate? Ask most people on the street, they don't even know what the hell the SPP is. And while I'm at it, they don't even know why we're in Afghanistan! Hi, I'm Congressman Tom Tancredo. You know, I just returned from a hearing on the southern border uh, in a place called Brownsville, Texas. One of the participants in the hearing told us that uh, for them, a border really doesn't exist between the United States and Mexico. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people have that attitude, that there are no such things as borders, that they really don't matter, that they're just lines on a map and nobody should pay attention to them, and that we're all just residents of the North American continent. Well, you know what? That's baloney. It's baloney, but only if you will do something about it to prove to the people in, of this country, and especially to your elected officials, 
that you know borders matter, that you know the sovereignty of this country is at risk, and that you will take action to make sure that they understand it. No one really picks up on this issue of um, a, a North American trade association that essentially eliminates borders. But uh, the fact is it's happening. Uh, you can see parts of it all of the time. So it's something that we need to stop. On February 16, 2008, about 500 concerned Canadians of all ages braved the frigid cold and descended upon Queen's Park to voice their dissent and demand of politicians a national referendum to stop Canada's participation in the Security and Prosperity Partnership of North America. Thank you all for coming out today. It's February 16, 2008 a landmark day in Canadian history when across the country Canadians are saying no to the North American Union, no to the SPP, and yes to Canada's sovereignty. The Security Prosperity Partnership between Canada, the United States and Mexico will affect every Canadian citizen. It should be the top issue of this federal election, and yet we have not heard a peep about it in the mainstream media. Why is that? Over the last year, I have been working on a full-length documentary about the SPP, and I have talked to many researchers, economists, politicians and public advocates about what is wrong with this process. It disturbs us that democracy is actually being stolen away from us on the, under this guise of this corporate, competitive global agenda. The SPP affects over 300 regulatory areas and every ministry of the federal government. It's a transfer of regulatory decision-making power from our democratic institutions to corporations whose main interest is making profit, not the enforcement or strengthening of health, safety, labor and environmental standards. The SPP is a dumbing down a reducing of quality of life, a reducing of standards, and there is absolutely no indication in any of the documents we've been able to obtain through hard pushing through the access to information. Not a single indication that we're looking for a higher standard anywhere. Canadian foreign policy is being matched to American interests. Here we have Canadian military leaders actually proposing, recommending, uh, that uh, the Canadian and U.S. governments take an incremental approach to an integration so as not to signal to ordinary Canadians that their sovereignty was gradually being given away. We are losing control over our resources with the SPP. In the document they talk about North American water and it is as clear as can be that the United States has begun to see not only water as a national security issue but Canada's water as part of its national security answer. Under NAFTA, we are required to export two-thirds of our oil and half of our natural gas to the U.S., even if there is a supply shortage in Canada. With the SPP, tar sands developments are being increased five-fold. Instead of creating steady long-term jobs, we are bringing in cheap foreign labour and exporting raw bitumen to the U.S., rather than processing it here in Canada. How is this rapid increase in resource extraction good for long-term employment in the oil industry in Alberta? or for the energy security of Canada? What about our commitments to Kyoto and combating climate change? The SPP process was started in secret by the Liberal government of Paul Martin.